Smart Textiles, Smarter World. Spark innovation with the Smartex community. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video cast this time. We are in the e-textile conference with Kevin Rodriguez from Senti. And we are going to have a chat with him to know a little bit more about uh, Senti. What do you do in Senti and especially in the Smart Textile department? Okay, so talking a little bit about Senti, so what we are firstly, we are a non-profit R&D institute that was founded in 2006. And basically our goal is to provide uh, new technology, new functionalities for the different industrial sectors. So we do this by the application of, uh, with the collaboration of a multidisciplinary team and by the application of both functional materials, but also smart materials and systems. And we also cover a lot of design and engineering part so we really want to focus from the beginning in development of technology itself but being industry driven we always try to make our developments according to the company standards and really try to upscale the technology from a lab scale up to an industrial scale okay thank you and i know that you have been working on a project really targeting health that you have presented this morning yeah exactly so so basically within the, the context of this conference okay. e-textile so it's clearly an area where we work a lot at Senti. So we have built a, a, a smart textiles and structures team that is highly dedicated to smart textiles, but we also focus the development of smart textiles within all the different departments of Senti. So for example, we approach this by a functional material approach. So by providing passive properties to textiles such as fragrance release, flame retardants. So this is only possible by the development of nanoparticles, nanocapsules, or functional coatings that can be applied directly to textiles. We also approach this in the fiber-based approach. So we have a three-component pilot scale production line that can develop fibers with, with advanced properties and, and also think about uh, electroactive fiber-based materials. So the fabrication of fiber-based sensors, actuators, that can also bring new functionalities to textiles. In, the, in this active approach, we also have a lot of expertise. In fact, since 2006 that we have been working in the field of print electronics. So it's also an area that we try to adapt our technologies and our process indoors to, to be applied for smart textiles and to bring up new functionalities to them. Uh, and finally, we have all the electronics that are an electronics department completely dedicated to the development of hardware, firmware, and also software solutions that can be applied to textiles. So this is something crucial for us. In the same way, once again, design engineer engineering is crucial and is something that we already discussed here at the conference, that it's a critical part to be addressed in, in order to think as smart textiles as a, as a possibility and a, a reality in the, in the market. We have already some products in the market that appearing, but if we clearly want to implement them, it's something that we, we really must address. Um, talking a, a little bit about the project, I lost, I lost myself, I'm sorry, but... No, uh, that's, it, that's nice because I mean, if you point out that in Senti you have like the textile part, but as well the electronics part that we were discussing, the design part as well, you have the testing exactly. and you have as well some uh, machines that you can, that they're real machines and you can think of the scalability. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that, that's nice. That, that's yeah. really our focus. So they really think about having some pilot scale production lines for the different areas that I mentioned, so print electronics, mm -hmm. functional coatings, uh, two component fibers. It's really something that we try to do to try to bring the technology from a lab scale to a pilot scale and try to make this bridge between R&D institutes and, and companies. So it's really a, an area where we focused with and smart textiles are also applied within the context of, of the health sector. And uh, that was one of the points of, of my presentation of today. Basically, uh, where I, what I presented was uh, a project from a bigger agenda that is going on in Portugal right now, that is Health from Portugal agenda, uh, that is basically um, an agenda that includes up to 88 companies that can go from in industrial partners to different type of R&D centers to universities and really the goal is to and the main objective is, is, is within the four years to try to develop up to 99 new technologies but technologies products services and processes that can be applied within the health sector and really try to make here a capacitation of Portugal uh, within this area so this is a big 
a big investment from, from <laughs> Portugal within this area and really shows our, co our compromise in, in terms of, of investigation and, and how we want to, to address the, the health sector in the future. Here, CENT is collaborating in several initiatives um, and smart textiles are also a reality of what we are developing within Health from Portugal project. So basically here, the project that I showed today, it's um, basically, basically a textile based, based sleeve for the treatment of leaf dim. Uh, leaf dim is basically a, a pathology where we have the accumulation of lymph in the, in the soft tissues of the peripheral limbs like arms and legs. And basically what we are trying to develop is a textile sleeve that can mimic a massage, a drain massage that is already completely standardized within the, the medical sector where all the clinical professionals know this procedure and basically is a cyclic approach where we apply a compression, a really, really gentle and soft compression that allows the drainage of the width uh, from the arm or from the legs. And like that, it reduces the swelling and it causes a relief and comfortable, uh, comfort in the, in the end user. So really here, what we want to do is to develop a device that can support the clinical professional in their activity and of course help the patients. Uh, for that, we are having a multidisciplinary consortium. So we have here a company, the textile company that is Tintex, that is highly involved uh, within everything that is related with the, with the textile substrate itself. We are collaborating with another technological center that is CTEF, so highly involved and also in everything that is smart textile based. And, and finally, but not less important, we also have the involvement of IPCA here that is more regarding the software and, and the interaction with the user and with the, with the clinical analyst. It is something that, that we are developing all together and really the aim of this consortium is to try to bring this, this solution to a high TRL, TRL level as possible and hopefully ha have a product that can be then applied by, by the company. Take how long does the project take? It, 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 it is around four years, so it, it is expected that in the end of 2025 we have, we have a solution. So this is the main goal of it and really what we all want to do at this stage is the application of flexible electronics and flexible actuation systems that can be applied on the sleeve and apply this, this drain and massage, I'll integrating also um, flexible monitorization sensors. So the pressure that we must apply to the arm must be really controlled in order not to harm the, mm -hmm. the user. So it's something that we are also addressing. And how are you controlling this pressure? So you have like a, by via phone, so the device is connected or it should be connected via phone and app? That's, that's a really interesting pre uh, question. It's something that, that is being like explored within the project because really what we have in mind in the beginning was that solution. So try to think as the mobile app as the overall control system. But we also understand that this procedure, since it is so standardized, it can be also uh, also completely autonomous mm -hmm. by the textile sleeve device itself. So it's something that is, that is it's being still discussed. It's okay. not completely defined, uh, but but we want to to think of both approaches and also make a market evaluation and go to the clinical centers. We are already are doing that. So for example. We are already equipment, equipping uh, clinical professionals with some gloves with pressure sensors for them to make the massages and for us to have the data of the pressures that are applied and try to use those reference values mm -hmm. as the performance indicators for our sleeves. So this is something that we are also exploring. Okay, but that's good that you say that there are like professionals, like health professionals involved in the project giving yeah. the feedback. And I think you have as well talked with them and you know that there is a niche market there where it can exactly. be applied. Yeah, this is something that we always do within the, these different projects that we have, medical or not. Mm -hmm. for, so for the different areas that is make, firstly make an evaluation of the market and ev evaluation of the requirements that we have for, for our solutions uh, within the health sector. More than that, after making this type of, of consideration, we also focus a lot on clinical trials. So this is something that we also must consider and is different when we talk about the health sector because the requirements are much more demanding, uh, but it's an area that we always include in, try to include in our projects to, to be performed. Because the device, you think it's going to be more in the healthcare? or more in the well-being? Because I, I think the regulation, I mean, the standardization yeah, of putting this is, the product in the market yeah, is quite it's different. completely different. It is something that we are also addressing right now. Uh, we know that going for the healthcare brings more demanding uh, 
standards, but, but it's something that, that we are addressing right now to see which solutions are more feasible, also according with the, with the company that because is involved. Because the, the pressure consumption. that you're going to do with the sleeve or the, or the trap on the trunks or the, the part that you're going to put in the leg, do you think it can be standardized for all the patients or every patient will need a different pressure? Because that's another... The pressure can be the same, but the issue here is that each patient is particular. So the state of its state of inflammation within the arm and swelling is different. Mm -hmm. So we, we can look at 20 lymphedema patients and they all have different type of swellings within the, the limbs, different type of limbs affected. So we are not thinking only in arms, but also in legs. And the section of the arm that are swelling is different. So it is something really that must be adjusted, but this is why we have the pressure the sensors pressure. involved in the matter. So we really want to control the amount of pressure that we are applying on the skin and make this the, our reference. So our system will be more intelligent due to this purpose mm -hmm. and not directly related with the, okay. and with the patient the itself. Future? Do you see a possibility to apply, as you're collecting that data, to apply artificial intelligence to the sleep? Is something that can be explored. We know that artificial intelligence is nowadays it's a, a reality, yeah. <laughs> and, and we are discussing it a lot within the, the textile sector. Uh, but really, at this stage, we are focused on the device development because this is the critical part. Yes. First, we must have the physical device itself, and it's quite demanding its development mm -hmm. in an ergonomic approach and according to the standards of, of yeah. the, this, this solution. Because we already know that, for example, within the market, there are pressure therapy solutions. Mm -hmm. Pressotherapy sleeves that yes. are already used, but here the case is completely different. We yeah. are not targeting this type of session. We are try really trying mm -hmm. to make a drain as massage, massage according to, to the standards and this brings added issues. Okay, so now we're going to see because I mean people probably is listening, people probably is uh, seeing us. So can we describe a bit the device? It has a textile part, printed electronics, I guess silver ink. Uh, I can give those. I can give yeah, the details of the materials, but I, it's it's clearly that we have here the combination of different techniques and different procedures mm -hmm. that will be explored. So, of course, advanced textile structures that must be really selected according to the requirements. So, conformability, adaptability to the user, uh, soft, so good skin contact. So, we want something comfortable. And clearly, we have also the application of print electronics as a flexible approach to monitor mm -hmm. pressure. Yes. We have also the incorporation of, in this case, pneumatic systems to make this compression and actuation mm -hmm. by, by the application of soft robotics. That is an area that we are also exploring and developing the project. And finally, but not less important, we have all the controlling electronics and interconnections within the, the yes, active system yes. that, are, that must also be th thought to throughout the project and are also being developed. So I guess it's, there is a battery or... It can be. In this case, we are... It's not pro a wearable solution because usually when the patient does this type of treatment we are not thinking really that he is performing other tasks mm -hmm. because when we are doing this treatment even in a clinical um, facility what happens is we have a completely the people must be mm -hmm. so in this case we don't need the battery let's say we can think of other approaches yeah, because we have no movement from the user but it's, it's something that is, is, mm -hmm. is being adapted according to the requirements. That's why I say that being close to the health professionals and it, it's really crucial for us to have the complete requirements for, for the product. Okay. And do you have any other project targeting medical or health in, under this umbrella? We had, for example, I can talk a little bit about a project that already closed because it, Health from Portugal Agenda is is still ongoing so we are now generating results for for the different challenges that we have ahead but thinking about for example smart health for all pro project that was another project that mm -hmm. i presented here at the event it's a project that that ended this year and we had the development of different solutions um, for different areas for example we we developed a smart textile based solution for muscular rehabilitation that is another textile sleep uh, in this case, the, the, the name of the project was Muscle Band Strap. So the goal was really to develop a textile sleeve with embedded dry electrodes for EMG. Mm -hmm. So really what we wanted was to collect the data of muscular contraction of the arm during uh, physical rehabilitation exercises mm -hmm. that were performed through a mobile app, a gamified mobile app that had different games for the user to interact 
and perform different type of movements and exercises. And while we was doing this type of exercise, we were acquiring the muscular response from from it. And like this, we can from different sessions we can understand the progress of the muscular rehabilitation treatment. So this was the main goal of, okay. of the sleep. It is currently being displayed at Medica. Uh, it was a project with the collaboration of, of uh, Sinti Citev Fraunhofer, or responsible here for, for the app. Here as well. And it's here as well, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and finally, but not less important, of course, the, the company Flux Biosignals, that is a company already well established within the health sector in terms of electronics for, for ECG mm -hmm. and G monetization. So this was a solution that was developed and right now it's, we, we ended up with a, a prototype that now it's according to the consortium okay. to make a, an upscale of it. Okay, and now I'm going to pose a question that, I mean, you normally work with prototypes mm -hmm. and uh, they normally remain most of them in the stage of prototyping yeah. or small scale production, mm -hmm. let's say. Exactly. What do you think is the gap to really upscaling? What are the problems that you face to put those products? Because the, the products are interesting for that market, actually, and they can solve a lot. Yes, that, that's Actual. completely true. Making a broader scope, going out mm -hmm. of the health sector now, because the standards are, are different yes. for, for this area. Uh, but really think about in the, the upscaling of smart textile in general. Uh, the main gaps that, that we are, are facing is that it is difficult to have a high output advanced processes mm -hmm. where we can really think of this in a profitable way for, for companies. This is the challenge, in, 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 in main challenge, mm -hmm. in, in my opinion, is really to have a process that can upscale this technology in a profitable way and without many changes to the already existing business from the company. This is also an issue yes. because usually the textile industries that we work with have already a well-established line uh, of production mm -hmm. line and making significant changes to this line brings limitations, brings costs and a huge effort from, from the companies. So this is also one of the issues that, mm -hmm. that we face when we think about the upscaling, let's say, industrialization of smart textile based solutions. What we really try to do at Senti is really try to adapt as much as possible our prototypes, our solutions to the company processes. Mm -hmm. So try to use their weaving process, their knitted process and try to bring confection steps, like say like this, or production steps that are similar to what they already do for other areas. For example, we, we demonstrated here in the in the DC Textile Conference uh, a project that is related with uh, another type of, of uh, project, that is TextPack, that is a project mm -hmm. for the textile industry itself, uh, where basically what we are doing is the industrialization of heated gowns, bathrobes. Mm -hmm. So really the idea here is already go to that step that you're talking about. So really focus on the industrialization and bring um, autonomous devices and auto autonomous equipments, let's say like this, that can industrialize the, the solution. The, the company is already capable of integrating and fabricating textile with the heated circuits in North. So the challenge is really to adapt the final steps for having a complete industrialized solution. Yeah, that's one of the gaps that uh, uh, the industrialization part is not there yet. So yeah, because if, if you look at textiles, they are highly output process. So we, companies produce kilometers and kilometers of textiles in, in a short period of time. And when you go, combine this with multiple materials being integrated, it brings extra challenges, of course. No, and as well, I mean, you have to be aware that the market is it's a niche. Yeah. So you're not going to go to the consumer straightforward. Exactly. So there are really niche markets that you can apply smart textiles. For example, healthcare, automotive. Exactly. I have seen as well a demonstrator like one year ago in an automotive. Uh, Interiors. Interior. Yes. yes. It's so, an area yeah. where we also work a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So, well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank you for participating. And uh, I'm sure we will hear Kevin uh, soon with another project because they are quite active. And we forgot to say that they are based in uh, Portugal. Yes, Portugal, One. north part, north part of Portugal. Yes, Porto, well, no, Parmalica, Parmalica, Parmalica. It's really, really yes. close to Porto. It's actually. really close to Porto, <laughs> but for everyone, it's Porto. Let's say.
half an hour driving. Yeah, you can stay in Porto and make and us a visit. Make us a, yes, of exactly. Course. Really interesting uh, facilities as well they have. Probably one day we'll yeah we we'll, we'll do a tour yeah, in we'll, the facilities. We'll try we can to do that, that yes. in the plan of the community. Yes. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much.